Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Webinar Wednesdays with your host, Bill Bronchick. Today's topic is Marketing to Find the Motivated Seller, the Elusive Motivated Seller. We are all looking for to find great real estate deals. So let's get right into it, shall we? What are the causes of motivation that would cause somebody to sell a property to you in an unusual way? meaning cheap or with terms or a subject to a lease option, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's get to some of those causes. Foreclosure, can't make payments, they're in a divorce, the property needs work, they have a job transfer, et cetera, or the house is in probate, somebody died, it's an estate. But actually these are causes of motivation but not notice the problem with the property itself, the problem with the property itself, except for one that needs work. Now, all of these problems are solvable. If it's in foreclosure, make up the back payments. If someone's in divorce, well, you know, sell the house and split it up. What's the problem? If it needs work, fix it. You got a job transfer, list it with an agent. If the property's in probate, clean it up and sell it. These are all solvable problems. But really, if you think about it, it's not necessarily the problem with the property. A motivated seller is someone who can't deal with their problem emotionally, mentally, intellectually. They've got a block. They've got a problem ownership, not necessarily a problem property. They have a bad relationship with their house. And ladies or gentlemen who are, who are watching this, if you've ever been in a bad relationship, you know what I'm talking about. You'll do almost anything to get out of it, even if it's not rational or logical. So what we're dealing with is someone who can't deal with their problem and they need help. They need help from someone with a clear head someone who can walk them through the solution and give them a light at the end of the tunnel and solve their problem. Because really what we're in is not the house business, we're in the problem solving business. People have problems. Now this isn't like the stock market. If you are a seller of stock and you are motivated, you trade at the public price of what it's trading at. You can't knock on people's door and say, hey, I heard you're getting divorced, would you sell me some Google stock at a discount? That's not the way it works. With real estate, it's more imperfect. There are individuals who list properties or potentially wanna sell a property that they are problematic with. Uh, not necessarily the property, but they're, the way they deal with it. So understand that we're looking for motivated sellers. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's a problem with the property. It's a problem with the ownership. And don't always assume that because there's a problem with the property, the seller will be motivated. They may not be, they may be level-headed. And don't automatically assume if someone's very motivated that there is a problem with the property because it may be perfectly a fine property. It's, it's the motivated seller. So what we wanna do is do as much marketing as we can to find potential motivated sellers who will give us a deal that we're looking for. And people ask me, well, how much should I spend? There really is no right answer to that. The right answer uh, potentially is as much as you possibly can as long as you make money on your money. Now, if you look at someone like Homevestors franchise, these people with the We Buy Ugly Houses billboards and TV ads, these people spend sometimes between ten dollars and $20,000 a month. Now, most of us don't have a budget like that, but obviously they're doing enough deals that it's making it worth their while. If you're spending $10,000 a month and you do 10 deals and each one makes you five grand or ten grand, that's certainly worthwhile. Of course, we want to start on the cheap, and some of the cheap ways to do it is what I'm gonna focus on in this webinar. So let's start with phone calling. We wanna pick a list of potential people that would, might be motivated or would be motivated. We wanna use a script. I highly recommend you use a telephone script and um, lay out all your questions about, my, my script has not only questions about the property, but about the motivation. We call test questions to see what the real motivation of the seller is. Q 
keep track of the leads that you talk to and get an appointment. That's the idea of the phone call. You want to get an appointment to meet with a person in person and sign a contract. And of course, if you don't make a deal or you don't make an appointment, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. That's my hands clapping hard. You want to keep on top of motivated sellers until they tell you to stop calling, call you an a-hole, or the number is disconnected. Keep calling. How often? Well, enough to keep on top of them, but not so they're going to hang up on you. So depending on the situation, if they're in foreclosure and the sale date is in two weeks, I would call every day. If they're just looking to sell and they're mildly interested, maybe once a month. It really depends on the situation, but always follow up with your existing leads because it costs a lot of money to get the phone to ring or a lot of time to find a potential motivated seller. And it's much easier to work on existing leads than try to generate new ones. So getting leads. Um, where would we get leads to call? Craigslist is an obvious choice. We could look on Craigslist and people selling houses. The newspaper, although there are not a lot of ads in the newspaper, won't take you that long. When I got started in 1992 doing this, I'd buy the Sunday paper every Sunday and I would call every single for sale by owner by phone. That's what real estate agents used to do as well to get listings. And you know, it was only 50 cents for the paper, for the Sunday paper. Now it's a little more, still not much. And I'd call every single one of them and very few people would do this. It's time consuming. Uh, it can be a little frustrating, but fruitful if you, you persist at it and keep calling everybody until you reach them one way or the other. Now, I ask people at my seminars all the time, how many people call every ad in the newspaper every Sunday? And nobody raises their hand. And it amazes me that people don't do this. Now, sometimes I get an answer like, well, there are hardly any ads in there. And my answer is, well, then it won't take you that long. <laughs> You know, if someone's advertising in the paper, who's typically going to advertise in the paper a house for sale? Let's face it, not to sound like a stereotypical answer, but it's going to be an older person, an older person who doesn't understand online stuff or doesn't know about Craigslist or doesn't, you know, have the savvy to do that. For sale by owner websites. There are many for sale by owner websites like forsalebyowner.com, Fisbo websites are plentiful. And some of them will have phone numbers, some of them won't. Sometimes you'll have to email them through the website. And by the way, when you email someone, don't get a conversation going by email. The idea of the email is to, is to set up an appointment by phone so you could discuss by phone and then you can get an appointment. Too many people rely on technology too much. Texting, messaging on Facebook, uh, email. Don't negotiate that way. It's a very poor way to do it. You want to get them on the phone. You want to get a sense of who they are and what their issues are. Also, for sale by owner and for rent by owner signs. Driving through neighborhoods that you're looking to buy houses. Find FISBO signs. And FURBO, for rent by owner. Now, for rent by owner is a very underutilized category. Face it, if you're looking to buy a rental property, why wouldn't you call other landlords instead of for sale by owners because let's face it if you've ever called for sale by owners a lot of them are a little nutty uh, you know, most of them are pretty nutty uh, they're listing it themselves without a realtor because they think they're smarter or they don't like a realtor or they're being cheap and they often have unrealistic expectations about what their house is worth and what they're entitled to but for rent by owners those are landlords those are just ordinary landlords who like you and i want to rent a property okay so um, call them. And that's an easier conversation, by the way, than talking to a, to a homeowner. Homeowner, you know, you say I'm an investor and they think, oh, you're stealing my house. If you talk to a landlord, it's just like, hey, I'm a landlord like you. Any interest in selling? And you just never know what you're going to get. Foreclosures. You can buy foreclosure leads. You can cross-reference them in databases and get their phone numbers and call them. and talk to them and try to set up an appointment to meet them. And so those are just some different types of lists that you can buy. There are many, many more lists that you can call of people, but you want to spend time focusing on the skills of talking on the phone and not just talking, but asking questions and listening more importantly. 
Another free, almost free marketing is door knocking. That goes along with phone calls. It's person to person, not email, not text, not Facebook, not Instagram, but good old fashioned belly to belly discussions with a seller. Again, pick a list, use a script, know exactly what you're going to say, exactly what you could say in response to when someone says something and practice it with your partner or spouse before you go out door knocking. Keep track of leads, again, whether they're phone leads or door knocking leads, keep track of them and try to get an appointment. Now, knocking on a door is, is, is gutsy. I'll admit that. It takes some guts. And you're going to get a lot of rejection, but surprisingly, not as much as you think. Um, when you email, you get a lot of rejection. When you talk by phone, you still get rejection, but people are not quite as um, rough around the edges when they're talking to a human. But in person, people tend to be the, the most diplomatic of all those means. People don't normally slam doors and you call you a jerk and throw you out. Some people will, but most people are not that brash. You know, if you're in New York, it's a little different. <laughs> uh, but most people are fairly friendly and they'll politely say, no thanks, or not interested. So the idea when you knock on a door is not to barge in and have an hour long conversation, but just to get a sense of when they're available to come back with an appointment and set the expectations of an appointment. And of course, just as with anything, follow up, follow up, follow up. Very, very important to follow up on existing leads. And by the way, do you need a sophisticated software program to do that? Not necessarily. You could use something simple like an Excel spreadsheet. When I got started, you know, computers were in the baby stage. I simply had a black plastic box I got at Office Max with the tabs one through 30. And then I would write down each lead on an oversized postcard with my notes and I would reschedule them 30 days out for follow-up in the tabs. I went and took a picture of the house with a Polaroid and I stapled it to the card. You know, it's, that's dinosaur age, but you know, hey, it worked. So if you have a good software system, you're computer literate, you want to use a CRM, and you've got hundreds and hundreds of leads, that's, that's fine. But to get started, keep it cheap, keep it simple, keep it effective. Mailing to people, that's another option. Now, this isn't quite free, this is going to cost you some money. But if you're limited on time, and you have some money, it's a lot more effective to have people calling you than you door knocking, calling them. If you don't have money, you're going to have to start with the door knocking and the calling. If you have a little time and a little bit of money, you may want to spend maybe $500 to $1,000 a month on mailers. It's a good start. You could do man random mailers. You can pick a neighborhood and just kind of you know, shotgun them. You can mail specifically to for sale by owners. You have the address and you may not have the owner, but you can look it up on public record and figure out who the owner is and send them a letter. You can get a list of people who are 30, 60, 90 days late. That's a list you can buy of people who are late on their mortgage, but no foreclosure has been filed yet. And you can actually mail to people in foreclosure. People who had foreclosures filed, that's an easy list to buy, to obtain, and in a lot of places you can get it for free. Now, the challenge with that is everybody has that list. So everybody's mailing to it. So if you're going to mail to people in foreclosure, make sure it's something memorable and you follow it up with a call and or a door knock. Okay, so if you just mail a letter, you know, hi, I buy foreclosures, I can solve your foreclosure problem, don't even waste your time. It's got to be something great. Let me tell you about a letter I used to do. I used to do this letter, which was in a fake priority mail envelope. You can buy fake priority mail envelopes. They have an eagle on them. It looks like the post office. It's legal, but it's ordinary mail. It's not priority. And they're about a 20 cents each. You can buy them. Uline.com sells them, if that's where you're looking. And you put a letter in there, and the, and the header of the letter says, I've got three solutions to your foreclosure problem. And it says, Dear Bob, 
I have three solutions to your foreclosure problem. Enclosed are two of them, good luck. And it's two lottery tickets, cost you $2. And it says, P.S., if you don't win, call me for the third one. Now, I've used this many times. And not only do people call, but more importantly, when you knock on the door, you say, did you win the lotto? I sent you the tickets. And they laugh and they say, well, that was you. Thank you. And it just totally breaks the ice. Even if they don't call you, it's a great excuse to knock on the door as a follow-up. So that's what I mean by be outrageous. Do something totally different. Don't just mail a typewritten letter uh, or a postcard because people in foreclosure get literally hundreds of pieces of mail, not just from investors, realtors trying to list it, mortgage companies trying to refinance, bankruptcy attorneys, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Business cards, very underutilized marketing tool, and I think badly done by most people. Most people have a really bad business card. It's amazing to me how bad people's business cards are sometimes. It's, it's, you know, you're dealing in hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of assets and you're too cheap to spend 50 or $100 on excellent business cards. It's amazing. You know, I meet people all the time. I used to run a real estate association and people would hand me their business card and it's, the, you know, first of all, it's perforated like they inkjetted it on their print because they're too cheap to buy. I mean, they're not committed enough to buy business cards. They're not that far into the business. Or even worse, they go to Vistaprint and they pick the first design. You know, there's 5,000 designs on Vistaprint. Everyone picks the first one. You know, the little row of houses, the cartoon thing. You know, most people do that. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, have a good business card, front and back. You know, have a very effective message. Have your picture on it. Have a logo. Spend a little money. You're asking people to hand over the keys to a three or four hundred thousand dollar asset, and you can't spend a hundred dollars on business cards. And by the way, your goal should be to hand out five hundred of them a month. Yes, you read that right. Five hundred a month. When you go to the restaurant, finally, <laughs> and they hand you a bill. Hand the business card to the person or stick it in there with your receipt. And it should say something like on the back, I buy houses, I pay referral fees. That way you're telling people who have the card what it is you do and what's in it for them. And maybe they'll hand it to someone else they know. If you're in a store and they've got a bulletin board, stick it up there. Everybody you meet, hand them a business card. Go pick up your dry cleaning, hand them a business card. Everyone you meet at a cocktail party, hand them a business card. And the business card be, should be such that it says by itself what it is you do and you don't have to explain it. So work a little bit on your business card, hand out lots, especially when you go to real estate club meetings, you know, when they start again. Um, your goal should be to hand out a business card to almost everybody in the place. Another cheap marketing, signs. Now, a lot of people don't like signs. You know, the, we call them bandit signs for a reason because in most jurisdictions, they're not legal, but it's not a felony. Um, just know what the fine is, by the way, before you do it. If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. Um, but seriously, um, they are effective. Um, you're gonna get a lot of them thrown out, cut in half. Uh, torn down. You might even get a few, you know, annoyed people calling you, telling you to stop it. You might even get a call from a code enforcement, a sheriff or someone like that. But just, you know, do be judicious about it. Don't be obnoxious. Don't put it on people's private property. Don't put it on road signs because the Department of Transportation will get to you. So, you know, telephone poles in the ground, so forth, you know, very cheap, very effective if you buy them in bulk. So, First test, you know, don't buy hundreds at a time. Try like 50 at a time of each design. And if it works, then you buy in bulk. Wooden stakes are cheaper than the metal ones. You know, the H-shaped metal ones, which by the way, you get for free on election day. So remember that the day after election day, go out and steal all the stakes from those signs that are in the ground, the political signs. Uh, but wooden stakes are cheaper. You can get the wooden ones at, uh, Lowe's or Home Depot and you staple gun them to there and, they, and you bang them in the ground. They're, I think they work better anyway, except in the winter time, they're hard to get on the ground. A sign stapler is a very effective thing. See the picture here? This is a sign stapler. 
it's basically a long pole with a stapler on the end of it. So you can, you know, go to a telephone pole and hang it really, really, really high so it doesn't get torn down so quickly. The very effective tool, sign stapler, Google it. They're a very effective tool. What should your sign message say? Be different. We buy houses. Great. I see them all the time. I'm going to get a little sign that says me too in my phone number and put it right next to them. <laughs> Be different. Use one or two colors. You know, I like the bumblebee. The, uh, the yellow and black works very well or red and blue or yellow and blue. Stick with three lines. People often put too many lines in there. You know, people are often driving by or at a stop sign and they only have a minute to look at it. So stick with three lines. Try to have a local number. Um, an 800 number looks like a company. You want to look more personal. Uh, a vanity number can be effective. Uh, you can buy vanity numbers. And a website is really optional. A lot of people put websites up. But again, now you're into four lines. So it's like we buy houses, any condition, phone number. You put website, that's four lines, too much information. So here's some examples of them. <clears throat> um, we buy houses, cash, any condition or situation. I have to like that one. It looks like it's hand done, even though it's not. They are generated by computer or offset. Um, sell your home in seven days. It's an effective one. Sell your house in 48 hours. Even better. It's even less than seven days. We buy houses. We take over payments. So if you're looking for subject twos, then tailor your message to subject twos. Now that happens to have an 888 number there. I said don't use an 800 number, but 888-888-8888, if you happen to have it, is a very effective number. If, if you have an 800 vanity number, that'd be okay. Or like an 855, um, you know, we buy whatever, you know, 855-55-WE-BUY, something like that. That would work okay, I guess, but a local phone number is usually best. Cash for keys, we take over house payments, 555 keys, what a great vanity number. Um, make sure you say we take over house payments because I used to use cash for keys. Uh, we take over payments without the house in there and people would call me about uh, cash for cars, take over car payments. I used to put cash for keys and then the phone number, people would call me and say, what kind of keys are you looking for? <laughs> so, you know, just from experience, you just gotta be specific. Behind in payments, we can help, free advice. 555 help, very, very effective. Now, this is a wide net as opposed to the previous one. Cash for keys, we take over house payments is gonna give you very few calls, but the ones that call are the ones you're looking for if that's what you're looking for. If you say behind in payments, we can help free advice, you can get all kinds. And I probably would change that to behind in house payments, just in case it's cars they call you about. We can help free advice. Um, you know, you're gonna get a much wider net, many more people calling them, and you're just gonna have to weed out what you're looking for. House problems, call for free advice. Um, this is an interesting one. I used to use this a lot, and people would call me up and say, my husband won't fix the bathroom sink. I have a house problem. <laughs> like, no, not marital advice. <laughs> house problem advice. But again, you're casting a wide net and you see what sticks. Behind in payments, math teacher can help. So not just we buy houses, math teacher buys houses. Retired firefighter buys houses. Um, greedy lawyer buys houses. Uh, I don't think that'll work for me. 555 help. So you get the idea. That's the type of thing that you have to do be a little outrageous. Uh, Jojo mentions digital business cards are the future where you can capture people's phone numbers. Yes, 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 very effective. Uh, I wouldn't substitute that yet for your physical business card, but in addition to, I think that would be a very, very useful thing. Um, some other questions here. Oh, Dan asks, if they don't pick up the phone, do you leave a voicemail and what do you leave? That's a great question, Dan. Be prepared with a script of what you leave on their voicemail. Not just, this is Bill, call me back. It's gotta be compelling, a compelling reason for them to call you back. This is Bill, call me back. I've got something for you. I got two lotto tickets for you or whatever. You know, just be, be outrageous and be compelling. So, and, and don't, go um, 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 and leave a message, you've got to write it out as a script and be ready so if they don't answer, you can leave the right message. And by the way, 
If it's an effective message, you can broadcast it. You don't have to call people. There's something called Sly Dial, S-L-Y Dial. It's an app that bypasses the ring and goes right to their voicemail. And they don't even hear it ringing. It says, hey, like for example, you're calling landlords. Hi, I'm calling about your ad for the property for rent. I'm a landlord like you, and I just wondered if you're interested in selling. I'm looking to pick up some more properties in that area. Here's my phone number. You could bang out a hundred of those through a, an answering service or slide dial or a broadcast service and three call you back. Look at all the time you saved. The ones that call you back, those are the ones that are interested. So just some food for thought. Okay, phone answering tips. Oh, this is my slide, sorry, phone answering tips. Use a script. No, 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 I'm sorry, this isn't for the voicemail. This is where people are calling you, my apologies. So again, use a script. I have a written script on one side, it has all the logistical information about the property. On the back are all the test questions that I ask in order to flush out their motivation and see what the real problem is so I can see if I've got a motivated seller on my hands. Okay, number two immediately confirm their name, phone number, and house address. I can't tell you how many times I've made the mistake of having a 20 minute conversation. We get disconnected, the battery died on the phone or mine or theirs. I didn't get the house address. I didn't get their phone number. I forgot their name. Bad, 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 bad. Now you got caller ID most of the time, but still get their name, get their phone number, get the house address immediately. Leave an appropriate voicemail for yourself, that is. Have an appropriate voicemail that is such that when people call, it's not just, hi, this is Bill, leave a message, but if you have a dedicated number, for example, for your house buying business, you can have say, wait, don't hang up. Leave your name and phone number. I need to talk to you. I'll, if I get back to you, I'll give you two free lotto tickets, whatever. You could also forward to a live answering service if you don't have the ability to answer live. You should just put your cell phone, and if you don't wanna confuse that with your personal cell phone, there's a bunch of apps that you can do for five or 10 bucks a month. You can get a second line on your cell phone, and it rings uh, to a different voicemail, and it, you know who, if it's someone calling because you know it's a different number. So you don't have to give out your personal cell number in that case. And if you can't answer it live, then forward it to some sort of live answering service and give them your script to ask the questions. What is the goal of the call? The goal of the call. Is it to make a deal? No. The goal of the call is to make an appointment where you can sign a contract. Now, you can e-sign, I know, and you can negotiate terms over the phone in theory, but I think that's all a bad idea. I think the goal of the call is to get to two things. What is the problem? What is, you know, the problem that's making them a motivated seller, not just the house? Can you solve that problem? And what version of reality are they living in? Are they living in this reality or an alternate universe reality? I mean, are they, are they someone you could potentially uh, talk in? to some sort of reasonable deal or are they just totally out in la la land, okay? So the goal of the call is to get an appointment to meet in person where you can negotiate a deal and sign up a contract. If they ask you, how much will you pay me? Dodge the question, ask another question. Um, well, let me ask you a question, Mr. Seller, and then ask another question. You know, you always control the conversation by asking questions, okay? The more questions you ask, the more you control the conversation. If you get confused, ask a question. Just write down on your hand, who, what, where, when, how, why. Who, what, where, when, how, why. The five W's and H. If you get lost in a conversation, you don't know what to say. Who, what, where, when, how, why. Again, signs, if you're putting them out, the goal should be 100 signs a month. So if people are calling on those signs and you're getting effective results, put up 100 signs per month. Another cheap marketing method is email. Email is cheap. So email leads, FISBO websites, you can do that. You can click on them and contact them. Zillow has the ability to do that. If you go on Zillow and you see a listing, click on there and it says alerts, get new listings there and put in your email address and it'll send you new listings daily, weekly, et cetera, on properties. And then you can go in there and contact sellers. So, Emailing leads, you can email FISBO websites, Zillow, 
you can buy realtor lists. You know, you can get a list of every realtor in your city for about $200 and bulk email them what you're looking for. Most will ignore, but you know, you might get a few hits. Be careful about email delivery though. Don't use your constant contact account for that because they will ban you. You have to use a service that allows you to bulk email purchased email lists. So make sure wherever you buy it from, ask them what service they offer that allows you to bulk email. Door hangers, another way to do it. So you're knocking on doors and they're not home. We could target people in foreclosures. We could shotgun and put out door hangers. We can use post-it notes, which I really like post-it notes, uh, and personalize them. Personalize, don't use something fancy and glossy. So many people in foreclosure, they put fancy brochures and business cards and leave it on the door. They get thrown out. Nobody calls on those. You got to make it personal. So use a Sharpie font. You can, you can print things with a Sharpie font in Word or use a Sharpie and copy it. This is a perfect example. You could do this in a door hanger or you can do this in a post-it note pre-print them. I need to talk with you about the house. Please call me right away. You see the blank up there? That's the hole for the door hanger, or this could be a post-it note. You could pre-print these that looks like a Sharpie font, and then hand write in the name, Bob, and then slap it on the door. Jane, slap it on the door. So Jane, I need to talk to you about the house. Please call me right away. And of course, obviously, you're going to put your name and phone number at the bottom of that. Okay, but a very, very effective. Don't leave a brochure, don't leave a business card, leave a post-it note or a very unsophisticated type of door hanger. Following up, I've mentioned this many times, but that is the key to success. You must follow up on leads at least, no less than 10 times, unless they tell you to go jump in a lake. I mean, perfect example, perfect example of this. Your TV isn't working right. You kick it a few times. You shake it. You reboot it. A week later, it happens again. You're not that motivated. Maybe you go down to Best Buy. You go into the store. You browse a little bit. But you're not really ready to buy yet. You're not that motivated. The salesman shows you around, introduces himself, and that's about it. Then it's Super Bowl Sunday. Your TV does not work. Crisis, crisis, you run into Best Buy and they say, welcome to Best Buy, how can I help you? And you say, I'll take that one right there. And that salesman had to do no work. If the first salesman gave you his business card and took yours and followed up with you, when you were ready to buy, they would have been in the right place at the right time. But the only way you get in the right place at the right time is being statistically in lots of places lots of the time, meaning follow up and be in the seller's face so when he finally decides, that's it, I need to sell today, bingo, you're the one who called. Now, as much as I talk on my soapbox about marketing, so many people don't do it. They wait for deals to fall in their lap or in their inbox or whatever. Or they rely on realtors, which is very unfruitful most of the time. Well, I hear excuses like, I don't have the time. It's too expensive. What? It's too expensive to spend a few hundred dollars a month mailing. If you put out a thousand pieces of mail and let's say it costs you a thousand bucks, if you don't have at least one darn good lead for a deal out of that, you did something dead wrong. Fear, maybe they'll make a mistake or they'll lose money. And most importantly, a lack of a good plan. Most people don't have a good marketing plan and therefore they don't execute. They dribble here, dribble there. They dabble here, they dabble there, but they don't have a consistently good marketing plan. You've got to have your funnel filled with leads at all times. A lot of people make the mistake of they get a lead, they chase that lead, they work that lead, they negotiate, and then a month later the deal falls apart and there's nothing left in the pipeline because they stopped the marketing system. Constantly you have to have that constant flow of leads into your marketing funnel. And a great way to do that is with my, of course, Marketing Defined Motivated Sellers Home Study Program. You can find this at LegalWiz.com. And it's a PDF manual, streaming video from a live seminar I did on this, audio files that you can download and play on your phone or burn to CD, sample marketing pieces, and of course, my award-winning telephone script, which will help you keep track of leads, flush out their motivation, ask the right questions, 
and get to the bottom line of what the seller wants and needs so you could solve their problem. It's only $397, a paltry sum, because even if you get just one or two good marketing ideas out of this, it'll be well worth it because you will make money in real estate. So go to LegalWiz.com, click on the store, find the mar marketing to find motivated sellers course. Use the code CURE, C-U-R-E, the cure for lack of dealitis. <laughs> That gives you 60% off, so it's not even $200. It's, it's a, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer, this course. So go over to LegalWiz.com, click on store. And by the way, you can use that code for anything else at LegalWiz.com with that code. So thank you for joining me today. I appreciate your participation. I hope you've learned a thing or two. Or at the very least, I reminded you of what you already knew and forgot to do, so go do it and go over to LegalWiz.com and get my course with the special discounted code. Thank you everybody for joining, have a wonderful week.